I'm Michal from Shankar College, and I'm going to speak a little bit about design objects as images. My lecture has three main goals. First, to point to the fact that design objects are overlooked by theories of images. Second, to propose three main reasons for this theoretical inattention. And third, to describe the structure of the design image. Uh, design is an omnipresent aesthetic visual phenomenon, which it is culturally loaded and influential. And many design objects possess deep appearances, which presents figurative and expressive compositions, such as the Bettina Spanker's um, jewelry design, which are very, very gloomy. At least this is the way I see them. There are, there are design objects that are saturated with ideology, such as clean cantinas, uh, um, uh, <clears throat> long-lasting uh, uh, long environmentally neutral stainless steel water bottles, which, according to them, when you're taking, when you use, by using them, you're taking a stand against disposable design. There are design objects that direct social behaviors such as rectangular uh, tables versus uh, round tables. <clears throat> there are design objects that refer to their contemporary zeitgeist, like modernist factories, or uh, prompt insights, like Michael Bates' <clears throat> dining, dining table from uh, 2016, <clears throat> and uh, his noted sofa. <clears throat> these, these, uh, his furniture reflect cold social interactions through get-together furniture. <clears throat> uh, there are even mimetic design images or design objects, such as this, uh, this, uh, uh, this muffin, this chair, which is a, uh, this poof, which is a, which is a muffin, which looks exactly like muffin. <clears throat> That's very, very mimetic. But still, design objects are overlooked by the vast, uh, the vast uh, theory of images. And uh, even today, when we're in the midst of the, midst of the visual turn and the return to the visual sphere is, the, the, is an arena of analysis of human nature and culture. I find three main reasons for this theoretical inattention. First, design objects furnish our, uh, furnish our everyday surroundings and therefore are naturally considered to belong to reality rather than to its representations. The second reason for this inattention uh, <clears throat> by, uh, by theories of images is that most of the sub-disciplines of design, such as industrial design, fashion design, interior design, even architecture, uh, textile design, etc. most of them are mass produced, essentially mass produced. Uh, when an encounter with a mass produced object does not naturally invite an attribution of a preconceived meaning to be embodied by an image. <clears throat> so, uh, so, <clears throat> We treat the design object, uh, to use the Arthur Danto's terminology, uh, the, the mass-produced object is treated usually as, an, as a mere object rather than a, a, a representation. These reasons lead, uh, for example, Jane Forsey in her very recent book, Aesthetics of Design, to declare that design is mute, which I take, uh, which I take to mean uh, the design is non-representational and non-imagistic. The third reason of this uh, theoretical intention is that even formalists, even, even formalists claim that uh, or agree that the essence, one of the essential uh, uh, properties of design is its functionality. And it Design functionality renders the design object close to us, definitely closer than images. Uh, the design object's beholder is more of the user than a, than a viewer. 
the, the, design, the design objects beholder lives in buildings, operates coffee machines, sits on, uh, on benches in square, wears clothes, wears eyeglasses, drinks from cups, writes with pens and carry, carries them in uh, backpacks. These are very responsive and mutual relations between us and the design object which indicate the difference between looking at mere things and looking at images. Use and responsive action make our site uh, very, very efficient and, and reduced up to the point that we miss the whole composition of the, of the design object. <clears throat> uh, this, this was uh, proposed by, uh, this was, uh, proposed by, by uh, Roger Frey in his very, very canonical book uh, from 1912, Vision of Design. However, this is the main point. Imagery is not foreign to design and functionality is actually integral and essential to design imagery. The, these examples that, uh, that uh, I've I've exemplified here, that I've shown here, uh, of full of content objects are not peripheral at all. They are not uh, peripheral in, in the discipline of design, even according to the, the most restrictive definitions of what Mitchell calls proper images. Uh, he dubs this, he, he coins this, uh, this term in his very, very comprehensive um, <clears throat> project on images called a uh, very known uh, project, which is called iconology. <clears throat> and the definition, the, the definition of proper image is, is, is the following. Image is a visual representation, which is based on likeness to represent it and refers to the represented. So, so two, two, three, three, uh, three conditions, visuality, representation, and reference. Mitchell himself, like the linguistic aestheticians, Goodman and Danto, tries to dissolve the distinction between proper and improper images, and to know that there is a large variety of kinds of images. I agree that the structure of images and their relation to their to their represented, to the symbolized thing, the symbolized reference uh, are versified. <clears throat> Sometimes images are even non-transparent. Gombrich and Goodman additionally proved that similarity is sometimes produced rather than revealed, and, the, and that there are various kinds of similarities. Moreover, uh, Reference are sometimes produced by, by visual pieces rather than preconceived uh, uh, <clears throat> by their creators. Mitchell calls images intermediate agencies that uh, stand between us and the perceived object. He follows Gombrich's, uh, Gombrich's assertion that uh, uh, images apparently uh, occupy <clears throat> a, a curious position somewhere between the statement of language which are intended to convey a meaning and the, the, the things of nature to which we can, only, we can only give a meaning. I think the design objects which are neither language nor nature but are depictive in character, I think the sta they stand exactly there. <clears throat> Do design objects mean the above conditions of images? Yes, many of them, many of them do. Many of them are visual iconic symbol, symbols of the reference, hence images. When the imagistic pro property is internal to the design object, it is structurally link, linked to its functional structure. Let me give you a few examples. Clean, contain, steel, and lively colors are integral to their depiction of su sustainability. <clears throat> uh, Bianchi muffin poof, sitability, the ability to sit on it, 
the, its affordance, its stability, is part of it, it, its visuality. It's part of the, the, the metaphor of muffin. It's part of its mimetic visuality. <clears throat> um, the, 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 the function is integral to the shape, uh, to the shape of the muffin. Of this uh, of this uh, chair. Same goes same goes with with, uh, with rectangular tables versus uh, versus uh, round table. The round table allows equal sitting positions. It actually visually shows a composition of equality. Modern factories. <clears throat> modern factories uh, impressive uh, solidity. Uh, expresses actually depicts the contemporary admiration of heavy technology, the modernist admiration of heavy technology. Uh, looking back at the modernist architect at modernist architecture, Stanford Anderson claimed is in his wonderful, wonderful uh, uh, article, uh, fiction or function, that this solidity, solidity is imagistic. Let's, uh, let's read what he says. He says, certain features of buildings may reveal internal functions sufficiently directly to be seen more than metaphors for those functions. The length and repeti <clears throat> repetitiveness of a factory elevation refers to similar characteristic of the processes it houses. Structural details may reveal their own function, but may also serve metaphorically. The great pin joints of the arcs of Peter Burns' uh, turbine factory in Berlin, beautifully machined and displayed on pedestals just above street level, insist on their own objectness while suggesting themselves as the engines of their own structural system and cognate with those engines of another mechanical system fabricated within. End of quote. <clears throat> it was a long quote, but a very, very beautiful one. The subjugation of functionality to mimetic imagery is well embodied in, uh, in, in Michael uh, Bates' uh, noted sofa and uh, dining table. <clears throat> Bates, what Michael Bates does, he distorts the object familiar function, thereby turning what is usually a place of social content to a space, turning it to a space of seg segregation. So his design objects are therefore mimetic and, 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 uh, and ironic, they're funny, they're witty images of the complexity of human relations. Thus, and I will end here, my time is up, that design objects depict and produce reference and meanings and are therefore representational visual artifacts, possessing semantical, referential, or even expressive property. They lend themselves even to iconography. Thank you very much. <laughs>